the topic we have chosen today as i mentioned earlier that is the role of zakat as an islamic social finance tool in realizing sustainable development goals sdgs the potential size of the annual zakat pool has been estimated between 200 billion to 1 trillion us dollar and zakat is much more prevalent than commercial islamic finance elevating hunger poverty and inequality promoting peace and protecting the environment are central to the core islamic principles known as the maqasid al-sharia the quran identifies eight categories of eligible use for zakah including helping the poor and needy refugees and displaced people and liberating those in bondage zakat does align strongly with numerous sdgs including no poverty sdg goal one zero hunger sdg goal two reduce inequalities sdg goal 10 and others collaborating with zakat donors and administrators reflect the spirit of partnership for the goals sdgs goal 17. it is about much more than mobilizing finance zakat and islamic finance have an underlying philosophy that embodies socially responsible development and is associated with a wide network for organizations crucial for promoting peace development and tolerance so definitely we are expecting a very wonderful discussion next couple of weeks so at this point of time i'd like to request our honorable keynote speaker dr aishat maniza to deliver his keynote speech please Thank you much let me share the screen first Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya wal mursaleen wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizer, especially the chairman, um, Dr. Abu Farooq, for giving me this opportunity. And as you know, the topic of discussion today is about the role of zakah as an Islamic social finance tool in realizing SDGs. So briefly, I would like to look at these areas today. Firstly, the general introduction and how zakat and SDGs are related. And I would also like to touch briefly on the issues in zakat administration that we are facing today while looking at the potential of zakat as well and what would be the main key forward or key takeaways from uh, the presentation that we are having today now if you look at the introduction we know that zakat is a ibadat matter as well as it falls within the ambit of muamalat in the sense that it helps a society to get a lot of advantage in terms of having uh, social justice now if we look at uh, how SDGs has started or initiated we understand that this is a global initiative where a lot of countries participate in it and it is a global um, initiative that needs to be uh, fulfilled before 2030 and therefore countries uh, collectively as well as individually are trying to achieve this target even though um, while we are trying to achieve this target we understand that COVID has posed more threats uh, to achieve this target and we are unsure whether we will be able to um, achieve what we targeted before COVID uh, within the timeline given. Having said so, we also understand that um, in achieving the SDGs, there is some role which uh, Zakat could play and that role is potential because it is understood that zakat is one of the key tools that could be used by the multilateral organizations and the respective countries in realizing the stages more than one goal overlaps with the objective of zakat linking it with maqasid al-sharia in the bigger picture so here are some questions which i would like to pose and which i would like to reflect on number one is what is the potential of achieving uh, stages using zakat Number two is, is it allowed in Sharia to link Zakat with achieving SDGs? Uh, the final question here is, can we do so within the scope of Sharia parameters applied to Zakat? 
Obviously, the answers for this question is already seen in the practice of countries in relation to zakat administration. And today, we no longer deliberate or talk about these questions because we understand that definitely zakat could be linked with SDGs. And in the bigger picture, we see maqasid al-sharia. And therefore, there is no doubt that um, you know there are no disunanimity of views among the Sharia scholars who say that whether we could achieve SDGs or not using Zakat, as long as we are following the Sharia parameters used in Zakat, there is no issue in this. So obviously we need to understand how um, SDGs are in line with Maqasid al-Sharia. So this is one of the research in which um, the researchers have identified how maqasid al-sharia is linked with SDGs, SDGs. So in a nutshell, we find that uh, from this slide, there is no reason why uh, we can't align uh, SDGs with maqasid al-sharia because maqasid al-sharia is broad enough to cover the areas found in SDGs. And most of the SDGs are already covered as seen in this slide. Now, another thing that we have to understand is that why do we have to link zakat and stages? Now, these are four um, tips or the reasons why we can link zakat with stages. First is zakat is a philanthropic uh, pool too large to ignore. It depends on the number of Muslims. Some people put it in a simpler way saying that as long as Muslims live in the world, definitely zakat will grow day by day because it is a quasi muamalat and quasi ibadat matter as some people see it. So therefore the pool is too large and effectively if we utilize that pool, definitely it has so much potential that as seen in during the time of uh, our fifth caliph, uh, Caliph Umar bin Abdul Aziz, um, there could be no poverty and there could be no receivers of zakat uh, in that sense. So next is uh, zakat is highly aligned with the uh, SDGs. So it is obvious that there are different SDGs which overlaps with the objectives of zakat and the recipients of zakats are covered in SDGs as well. We will see that in the next slide. Next is UNDP has already begun harnessing zakat uh, for SDG projects. So since the authors are from UN, uh, UNDP itself, they have articulated that in this article, um, they have done various projects with Basnas of Indonesia in um, finding out the potential of achieving um, SDGs through zakat and the outcome of these uh, projects have already shown that um, zakat and SDGs are compatible. So there's no doubt that um, we have passed the time where we were deliberating whether this could be done or not, but we have come to a stage that we have acknowledged that zakat can be linked with SDGs and there are various types of advantages we get when we link zakat with SDGs. So that part is already confirmed. The final one is engaging with zakat is an opportunity for a wide range of stakeholders. So obviously, when it comes to Islamic economics, our stakeholders not only include um, people, we include environment as a stakeholder as well. And the definition of stakeholders are beyond of what we see in the uh, classical times as including poor and uh, widening the rich uh, gap between rich and poor using money as a form of where to mitigate uh, those types of things we find in the society, which leads to social injustice. So from this slide, it is clear that we can map zakat with SDGs. And how to map it, as you can see from here, the maqasid al-sharia already aligns with different types of um, SDGs that we find. And as a result, the outcome we understand from here is that Zakat and SDGs overlap with Maqasid al-Sharia. And justification for linking Zakat with SDGs is that first, Maqasid al-Sharia aligns with SDGs. This shows that SDGs are developed, um, are developmental goals, and it leads to 
uh, improving socio-economic life of humans to have a quality life. And this is in line with the Quranic verse um, 785, where the verse supports the sustainable development concept. And then finally, we have uh, the fact that zakat strives to achieve maqasidu sharia. Ah. So it's like a, um, in, in a circular motion where one thing leads to another and bring domino effect to the societies. So what we believe is that the UN SDG goals, as well as um, the recipients of the zakat kind of overlap. And as a result, there are potential of zakat that is still untapped to realize, um, we can say, maqasid al-sharia as well as UN SDGs. So next is uh, issues in zakat administration. So currently, if you look at the problems in zakat administration, you will find that in zakat administration, we find it, it is always about uh, the local area in which you are situated. The mindset is that poor people located or the needy or the recipients or the asnafs located in a particular area will be considered under the purview of that particular zakat organization. Therefore, it is limited to certain areas and therefore we are unable to see the bigger picture and effective zakat distribution could be an issue. Next is uh, establishing sustainable wakuf uh, sorry, zakat funds as a collect, collection of zakat is passive. Uh, there's a mistake there. Instead of wakuf, it should be zakat. So establishing a sustainable zakat fund as collection uh, of zakat is passive here simply means that uh, it is very rarely that we see that zakat organizations strive actively to collect funds. Rather, rather than that, the mindset we have today is that Zakat is something that will be paid by the Muslims who are eligible to pay. So instead of creating awareness or running um, here and there, it is better to wait and uh, sit at the office so that once the funds is received, only thing the Zakat organization should do is the disbursement. So in some areas, this is the practice which they follow because they believe that no active um, role is required to collect funds in this area. So next is unable to have an effective mechanism to locate the most deserved recipient, recipients of Saka. So how do we know who are in our societies who must receive zakat? If we are not conducting a survey or thoroughly trying to find who who should be given or who are the most deserved uh, zakat recipients, it's kind of impossible for us to gauge whether whatever we are doing is correct or not. And we don't understand whether what we are doing is effective. And there are many uh, issues that lead to this. If you look at the different zakat organizations, data collection and understanding the societies is still a hiccup we face. If you ask for data, for example, most of the zakat organizations are still unable to provide those data and they don't study those data to um, find what needs to be improved continuously. So this is something we need to be mindful and systematically we need to do this as this could be a governance issue. So next is zakat fund is mainly used for consumption and asnaf empowerment programs are limited. So if you look at different countries, how they manage it, they manage zakat funds differently. But the main idea is give the money, distribute the money. We don't care whether it is used for consumption for, or for other purposes, as long as it is given to the correct asnaf. So asnaf empowerment programs are something that we need to initiate. Next is inability to establish an ihsan-based registration system for asnaf to receive zakat. So this simply means that um, sometimes there are asnafs, when we interview them, they come and say, we feel that uh, we are humiliated when the zakat uh, registration processes are uh, made. Simply because it depends, for example, imagine a, um, a single mother with children. So if that person goes to a zakat administration uh, office 
to receive zakat, obviously cross verification will be done. And in cross verification procedure, there would be various types of interviews and various types of processes the person will go through. And depending on the interviewing officer, the the way how the questions are asked, the way how the processes are done, the person might feel more shameful than uh, you know going it, it could be better rather than sitting at home without receiving anything than going to a zakat office so this is something we should be mindful and uh, these are some of the issues that we face in zakat administration today so these are some of the issues there are more than this but due to the limitation of time we will just uh, discuss up to this now what is the potential of zakat so there is a lot of potential of zakat that we could tap, provided that we have the right technology, we have the right political will, we have uh, obtained the right fatwas that we have to uh, we have to receive from the Sharia scholars to use zakat money in the proper way, and also we should be able to uh, unlock the full potential of zakat provided that there is proper sharia governance mechanisms followed in zakat administration for example at the end of the day we need to conduct sharia review sharia audit of whatever has happened to the funds and we need to be uh, stringent in application of governance standards high level of governance standards to have not only because we are accountable in this world, but in in Akhira also we are supposed to be accountable for this type of money uh, we spend in our societies because it is a uh, ibadat matter as well. So provided that we do all these four things, we can definitely um, unlock the full potential of zakat. So the first thing we need to do is internationalization of zakat. So this simply means that rather than talking about my people, uh, my country, we need to think uh, like a uh, ummah. We need to promote uh, brotherhood principles so that uh, we would not um, say that the zakat money we collect in a specific location is for that specific location and would sit on it even though there aren't eligible asnas in that particular area so we need to internationalize zakat and think that the whole world is like one ummah and since it is one ummah we shouldn't have any such restrictions in doing so next is adoption of active zakat collection strategies so one of the strategies uh, could be for example during covid we understood that the physical collection of zakat is not possible so therefore we have invented Using online transactions, we can um, transfer zakat money. And likewise, even door-to-door -door zakat collection is also done if they don't have uh, online zakat um, collection, zakat payment uh, facilities available. So meaning that actively we, we need to collect the zakat funds. Not only that, but also we need to create awareness about how to calculate zakat funds and how uh, how important it is to give zakat money on time and also during the covid time what we have encountered is that in some parts the zakat funds became like depleted because there were so many asnafs that became uh, poor overnight and they needed more aid than it was like a normal year so as a result uh, we had to use fatwas whereby it says that you can even pay zakat uh, forward so these things need to be like actively promoted by the zakat organizations and then only we will see that zakat funds are um, sustainable and we have enough funds to cover the needs of the asnafs. So next is implementing effective strategies to locate the most deserved recipients and maintaining their registry. So in this regard, what we understand is that Normally, uh, when we try to locate uh, persons who are in remote areas, it becomes difficult because we don't know their whereabouts. And once a registration is done, again, if the change of address is not communicated, we are unable to locate them. And as a result, we might lose them in the process. Therefore, in order to have the proper information about the whereabouts of these uh, most deserved recipients and um, 
how the zakat money could be distributed to them it is important to use the technology that we have uh, today this is industry 4.0 so we might use uh, iot internet of things for this purpose one way of doing that is for example for the zakat recipient once the first time registration is done a smart gadget with a sensor will be given and he would take that uh, sensor the, that gadget to home and then through the gadget the zakat organizations can collect information today it is even possible to understand whether they are facing hunger or whether they are feeling sad or whether they are feeling happy through this type of uh, gadget sensors so i believe that we just need to innovate such mechanisms and find a solution for it rather than saying that uh, we have to physically go and find a whereabouts of them and we have to do it in a physical manner and now the excuse we have is uh, uh, always covid we say that due to covid we are unable to do this we are, have this limitation that limitation so instead of focusing on our limitations why don't we just start um, using innovative technologies for our advantage so that is the message i want to give next is creating tailor-made zakat programs to assist recipients to be empowered rather than giving money for consumption so obviously there's nothing wrong in giving money for consumption purposes but if you come up with structured zakat uh, programs to empower them like uh, it, it is done in singapore by Moise or basnas in indonesia those things will give um give some kind of empowerment to the society and we will find more zakat payers than uh, zakat asnafs so the last point deals with the this point whereby they said that building the spirit of brotherhood and motivate zakat receivers to uh, of today to be tomorrow's zakat payers so this should be our motive in um, spending the zakat money so what is the fair way forward here obviously we need to internationalize zakat and we need to look the whole um, of muslim countries or muslims living in the world as one ummah so for one ummah if anybody is affected we should be um, willing to spend zakat money and we should be willing to help each other in that uh, sense so single ummah and the spirit of brotherhood with solidarity needs to be promoted with shared responsibility. So shared responsibility here means individually or collectively, we should be prepared to help each other. And Zakat could be in forefront in this regard. So what is, I mean, the question here would be how practical is it to internationalize Zakat? Now it has been already done. So using this example, of uh, how zakat support from malaysia helped communities in kenya to recover from drought we understand that this is something we could really implement in the world and this is something that we should strategize and move uh, towards so it says that with the right partnership zakat from a state in malaysia was able to help one million people halfway around the world in rural kenya and if you look at the impact of it, you see the figures in one side. So imagine the impact it has created. Imagine um, the good name it has given to Zakat itself. And we can understand that effective Zakat administration is uh, very vast in the sense that um, the output is something we can't even imagine. So. It is something we have to understand. Now, the question is, how do we do it? Um, instead of having a decentralized um, uh, way of managing the zakat funds, I believe that it is time to centralize the way in which we manage zakat fund in the whole ummah. So my last slide is about the recommendation, uh, which I want to propose here, that is adoption of crypto zakat. So when crypto zakat is adopted, the idea here is that is instead of having crypto zakat for every organization of zakat um, one platform could be used to connect the zakat payers and the zakat recipients making the role of uh, regulatory authorities of zakat uh, and the zakat management organizations to actively find the most deserved uh, zakat recipients and put them in the system so that any zakat payer could find them in the system to give the money 
So basically, in this Zakat platform, the whole idea is uh, blockchain technology will be used. So the simplest way of defining blockchain technology is uh, to state that uh, it is a decentralized distributed ledger where provenance of a digital asset is recorded. And the reason why we call it Crypto Zakat platform is because uh, the technology is used technology used is um, blockchain technology and um, when we look at how this platform works is that it is so transparent and it has higher level of governance that uh, the transactions conducted in this platform becomes immutable and therefore um, the confidence of the parties involved in the transactions will be boosted so imagine that um, Imagine a practical scenario whereby the Zakat management organizations from all over the world will be listing or will be putting the information about the Asnaf in various parts of the world. And from any part of the world, the Zakat payer could be. And the Zakat payer will have to first register in the platform and will have to have a digital wallet uh, to do the transactions. So once he uh, successfully register in the platform, he will be able to identify or find out the most deserved uh, zakat recipients and send the money to wherever the person is located to whichever uh, zakat asnaf which the person thinks is uh, impactful so this is something that we could um, use through technology so another thing we can think of is um, when i told you about the humiliation made uh, by some of the zakat organizations when people are registered to receive zakat could be mitigated through um, use of artificial intelligence. For example, we can have uh, chatbots or um, those types of robo officers who could deal with customers in a manner that would be uniform. And as a result, uh, the person might not feel uh, so bad inside them that they are asking for money and might not be humiliated. So these are certain things that we could use with the help of the technology. So with this, I conclude my presentation. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum.